Yo, what's going down, fishing fam? I don't know how well you guys can see me, but it is early in the morning. It's barely five o'clock in the morning. I'm hoping to get some early fishing. Let me tell you, I've been fishing quite a bit during the, well, not, not quite a bit, but I did come out like two or three times during the day and I just managed to pull one fish out. One of them was with Chuko fishing. Aww. Oh, I think I, yep, I, I got bit. Let me tell you, I ain't never got bit on this. Um, that lure? Yeah, it's the Guggen, the little. Are there little ones? The it's a little tiny one. It's a small one, but I made it even smaller. Check it out, guys. We got Chuko in the back. <laughs> The other one was my boy Oscar and uh, my son Brandon. You heard a fish drum? Mm -hmm. Take a seat right here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that one? Oh yeah. Finally! At least one of us got a fish. That's the beauty. The worm. The worm. Good old wacky rig. Wacky rig? Yes, sir. Give it a kiss. Check that out, guys. Oh, Dang. Fire. Huh? Yeah, ish. Dang, this guy's skinny. Kiss it. Fishing's just been tough. With Chuko, I came like at, I think it was like at six in the evening. And then with Brandon and Oscar, I came, it was around, I think four or five. So it was when the sun was like the highest. At those hours, I don't know if it's just cause I haven't been fishing a lot or because of the hours or what, but I just haven't got any bites. And I ran into uh, Macho Camacho, he's another fisherman. He's a kayak fisherman, he's really good. He told me that he's been getting bit earlier. You guys can't even see me. Go over there to the light. So I'm just gonna hit up all the spots that have uh, lights. Like right there. And over there. I'm gonna be throwing but right now. I'm not gonna use my, cause I want vibration. It's the dark sleeper. I'm gonna use that one. I'm gonna try these light areas. I'm gonna try stay close to the light not only for the bugs the bass are gonna be eating but for the sick so you guys can actually see something i don't know how good the gopro i know this is my newer gopro i know the older gopro did terrible the seven this is the 10 but i know the seven did terrible under lighting i mean uh in the dark well not in the dark like when it was barely starting to get dark it's like you basically putting on sunglasses how it looked like with the gopro like i could see but the gopro couldn't all right, you guys, I'm gonna tie on a frog. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I shouldn't be throwing a frog, I feel, on floral. And with my this rod, this isn't my frog rod. I actually have a dedicated like frog rod to it. The reason being is, is if I hook into a frog, this rod has a lot of bend and you don't want a lot of give, guys, because look at how beefy these hooks are. Even though this is a small frog, those hooks are really thick, so. If I hook into one, I'm really gonna have to set the hook. And then on top of that, I don't know how strong this line will hold up. But let's see, guys. It ain't nothing like a blow up, guys. guys i think i saw this guy roaming it wasn't him it was one other guy but there's fry all right there i barely had this guy hooked but there's fry all right there so oh look there's another one i think that's the one i was looking at or is that oh i think that's a catfish but i think he's drawn by the smell of that carp 
Let me put this guy away though. Oh dang, there was one right there. Should have known. Gosh dang, I don't want this guy to hit the rocks. So I'm gonna toss him a little bit. You see? Did you see that? I think they're over here right now guys my whole setup here guys this is um, a really light rod it has a lot of bend to it like i said earlier i was throwing the frog and this is eight pound test uh, leader it's eight pound test floral with 10 pound braid it's with the uh, fg knot but the reason i like throwing the fluke on this since it does have a lot of give i like that whipping action because if you use like a broomstick what i mean by a broomstick is if your rod has no bend like my frog rod what i was telling you guys earlier about my frog rod if you use a frog rod when i pop it like this i don't know if you can see the tip of my rod how it's giving a whipping action it's basically doing this the tip of my rod so when i do that the fluke it dances it basically does this in the water or well, underwater which is what i wanted to do because it looks like a fish is trying to flee and trying to zigzag you know when fish try to flee they zigzag or they're chasing down prey that's why i like a sensitive rod you can also do it on on a spinning reel if you don't have a sensitive rod a sensitive bait caster i like doing it on on this specific rod just because it has so much give this is my favorite rod as a matter of fact because i like i love how sensitive it is but there's limits to it again i wouldn't throw a big beefy frog that little frog that i had i was willing to gamble because it was the hooks aren't as thick as like a popping frog and then plus this is floral so floral has a little bit of stretch but if you're using a broomstick, all you're gonna do is just pull it out of the water. You're just gonna pull it straight and that thing isn't gonna give any action. And I love the fact that it's so sensitive because you can kind of more or less feel when you're making it dance. What also helps is if it's right in front of you guys. Like if it's right here and it's clear water and you can see well clearer water than it normally is. But if you can see your bait, oh, that was a fish then. I just saw, I thought it was my fluke. But if you can see your bait and then you can twitch your rod and you're making it zigzag, basically do this you need to mimic that when it's further out so however you're working your wrist oh there was a slap right there that might be a carp guys don't always assume that it's a bass because carp do jump out of the water i don't know for what basically want to do is make your fluke dance and that's a good way of also making a lot of your baits like the frog it's called walking the dog you get that motion going basically like this right now if i had a spook on I would be walking it or a frog if you cut like one leg shorter than the other it makes it easier because one leg will drag so it'll make it but you'll start to notice it tends to go to one side there are frogs that are really good for walking like they're made for walking i like a spook because a spook and you can do it with the fluke too it stays in one place like it really and the popping frog oh that's my favorite frog but they stay in one place and the popping frog because it creates a lot of commotion it makes it seem like a a fish that like on top of the water and it's struggling or whatever it is like whatever's on top of the water struggling it creates a lot of commotion and i get a lot of blowouts my hookup ratio isn't great on it i'll hook up maybe like 30 percent but let me tell you once you get a blow up man your heart starts pumping that's what i love i love the the rush of it what i do when i feel a line when i feel a little thump because you never know if it's gonna be um like if you hit a rock if you hit grass you never know basically what it is but what i do is when i feel a thump is i'll give oh my gosh there was a bass right there too a little tiny guy but what i do when i feel a thump is i give it slack i give it line so i put my rod forward and then i just stare at my line that's all i do is i feel a little thump i stare at my line and i wait to see if there's if it's moving it's moving then you definitely know you got a fish if it's not moving then you chances are you don't get a you don't got a bite if you're not 100 percent sure and you're thinking that maybe you did get a bite what i would do is i'd pull my line i'd pull my rod out this way just to see if my line gets straight and see if it's moving or if i feel the resistance like if i feel my rod bending sometimes it might be because you are in a piece of grass I tell you like i tell everybody guys hook sets are free you feel that resistance i'm setting the hook i don't i don't care if i hook into a tree pounder i'm i'm setting the hook i really don't care so if you guys do feel a little resistance i'd set the hook now that's after you gave it a little moment because there are sometimes the bass will inhale it and he'll just sit there like you hear people say like oh i didn't even feel him pick it up like sometimes i've done that it's rare but uh it'll be where he just eats it and then he just sits there like he doesn't move or anything so your line's not gonna move so you might even feel like oh i got stuck in a branch like usually the little ones will eat it and take off swimming the big ones sometimes will inhale it and just sit there 
Like they won't even move. I'm not taking the risk, guys. Because if you just like reel in, you're not gonna set the hook. Like the hook's not gonna penetrate its mouth. Especially if it's not the roof of the mouth. So hook sets are free, guys, and I ain't gonna be shy with it. Some of these dings, a lot of these dings I'd be catching, they come flying out of the water. And I don't have a lot of time here, guys. Oh, look at the frogs right there. Like, it doesn't matter if the bass are feeding on the bottom, if they're feeding on top. The fluke is really versatile, man. You can work it really fast. They're top water. Or you can even throw it on, like, that little scum. Of course, if it's not too thick. But you can work it on. I've caught them on top water like that. There's a little hole. The fluke is still on top. And they'll bass will come up and eat it my favorite color is this one it's um white it's like a ghost color with flakes oh you guys saw that I hope you guys saw that. There we go. I saw that guy eat it on top. That's what I'm telling you guys. They'll eat it on top. I was right at the bank too. As you guys noticed that when the fish ate it, I saw him eat it. You guys saw him jump out of the water. I still give him slack and then I set the hook. That's what I'm telling you guys. Like. And I knew the fish had it in his mouth. I saw my bait up out of the water where I can see the bait and he took it under. But I wasn't so quick to it's the same concept even when you're frog fishing. When you see a blow up, you give them slack because sometimes they'll blow, they'll miss the, uh, the frog completely or they'll take it under through the skirt of the leg and then they'll readjust it underwater. They're not gonna spit it out, guys. There's another frog right there. I'll show you guys, let me catch this frog right here because I'm behind him so he can't see. barely had it and believe it or not frogs are really dumb guys i can probably get that guy to bite it again same frog same thing he's right there again there's another buddy you guys can see him he's like over here and then this one's down here but look look at how i don't want to say how dumb frogs are but look at how greedy they are Bro, you just got caught. So I'm telling you, like, that guy literally just got caught by this. Look at, he even invited his friend. Man. He, his friend's thinking, oh man, there's... Oh, that other guy got the wiser. Frogs are really territorial, guys. Really territorial. I just caught you right now. Mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that. Spit it out. Oh, this guy spit it out and then he swallowed it even more. Come on. Bro. There you go. There you go. Didn't even hook him. He was just holding it. see it but there's a frog right there let me try to get closer so you guys can see one he does swim off i saw another one and he swam off maybe i can catch that guy my son would love a bullfrog 
Hold up. Look at that guy. <laughs> that guy is huge. Alright y'all, that's gonna be it for me. Damn, my GoPro's hot. It was... <coughs> it was a pretty good day. Ish. I mean, I would have loved to catch more fish. I ran into Sergio and he was telling me about his tagging. He said he was the winner of the Bass Grabber Tournament. Uh, one, the last one that I was in. Yeah, he tags the fish where he inserts it into the fish and it just stays there. It doesn't hurt the fish or anything like that. So if you catch one, he'll actually, he's going to do a raffle and he's going to give something away. I don't know if it's uh, a rod or a gift card or something. But I think like at the end of the year. So the more you enter, the more chances you have of winning. But what it is, is research on like the fish, how they're growing, where they're moving. Like me, I'm a big geek about that. Like I do love that. Like I wonder whatever happened to that. And I like whatever happened to that four pounder that I caught. Like was it, is it still there? Um, a little while later, I think it was Sam. He caught a four pounder. He caught it on a, on a swim bait. And he caught a four something. And I wonder if it was the same bass. Like it was a little bit further down from where I caught it. But I wonder if it's the same bass. Is there more? <coughs> so that's why it's really cool what Seth Hill's doing. Let's say, like, for instance, for that bass, I would have known if it was my bass. Had I tagged it, I would have known if it was my bass, how much it grew, if they are growing, if they're stunted. And he's also doing it for a biologist. A biologist needs information on if our bass are stunted, meaning they're not growing. When you have too much fish, too many bass in the lake, what ends up happening is there's not enough food for the bass so you end up they end up getting stunted uh, nature kicks in and it won't let them grow to a certain length so if you end up do catching like a four or five pounder that's really good because they normally don't get that big like at all so what Sergio is doing is he's getting with the biologist and telling them you know what this bass I caught five six years ago and it's only grown so much the biologist will know like no you know what he's supposed to be this weight this size at his age so he can get together with a scarate and basically tell him you know what you guys do need more food you guys do and without said he'll doing this we're never gonna find out we're never gonna find out like they need hardcore like evidence that the bass are really stunted and they're not growing so this way they can do something about it they can give more food to them i can tell you right now the bass were stunted like the average bass was like three pounds two like if you caught a two three pounder you were doing it was a pretty good day most lakes that's a dink like catching a six seven eight pounder is what we would consider catching a three four pounder so our lake is stunted uh they restocked it with if you guys don't know they restocked it with florida bass florida string bass and those are more they grow quicker and they're more aggressive when they fight i'm not talking about so much biting um but when they when you do hook them like they put up more of a fight like you'll think you'll have a two pounder and it's not even a pound yeah so that's pretty cool research what you do is you there said he will have his number on there so you can text them the number and the best way to do it is if you get the weight and the location like if you wanna me i would be more in i would also be interested in what you caught them on like i have a theory and sergio's uh what he's doing will help me on my theory i have a theory that it's tough to catch a bass the same bass on the same bait it'll debunk like oh yeah fish forget in 15 or 20 minutes 
Like if it, all the fish that said he'll have caught, like a good percentage of them won't bite the same lure. That's pretty cool information. I think that. I think that the, it's tough for like, if, especially if it's gotten caught twice by the same lure. I think fish will remember like its whole life. But anyways, that's a little cool information to know. And then on top of that, if you're really into bass fishing, it does help like with the biologists. I think that the bass need more food, but they're not gonna stock more food unless there's hardcore evidence that the bass are stunted. Like then we have an argument. So if you guys do want to help out, if you guys do want this Tascarate to be great again as far as fishing, and it'll even benefit the cat fishermen because catfish eat a lot. Like especially with what they, they stocked in there, those trophy catfish, they eat a lot. So it'll also help out the cat fishermen. And the fact that there are more catfish, it's more competition for the bass. Like if you have a bass lake, you tend to not put other fish in there. You just have bass in there just so there's less competition. The only fish that you do put in there is food for the bass. But um, yeah, again, you guys, if you guys do catch a tag fish, submit it to Sergio. But uh, hope you all enjoyed the video, man. Smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, man. Love y'all, God bless to the next.